Hello everyone. Today I am going to do a two part tutorial series on how to do confirming inside DaVinci Resolve. Confirming is nothing but moving a sequence from your NLE that is your editing program to a color grading program for color grading and mastering the output. With a simple sequence I will show you how it's done. So this is a two part series. In part one I am going to show you the best practices for locking a cut in Avid Media Composer and in part 2 I will teach you how to relink your IRS source files to the sequence in DaVinci Resolve using an AAF. Before moving further subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can keep track of all our tutorial series. So without further ado let's get started. I have already created a demo project inside Avid Media Composer with the use of proxy footage. For those who don't know what a proxy file is and how to create it, I have made a separate video for it. So check for the link in the description below. Here you can see I have created a small sequence and I named it as rough cut. You can see four video tracks and one audio track in my sequence. But in real time, the project might be even more complex than this one here. But the approach I'm going to show you is applicable to every project irrespective of its complexity. First, I will explain my sequence here. I have four video tracks. The first bottom two tracks are my A roll and my B roll where all my footages and edit goes. And the third layer is the FX layer. This is where all my effects are arranged. And the top and final layer is where I have my CinemaScope crop effect. Okay. Let's see how to prepare and lock your sequence. Step 1. First, before doing anything, I'm going to duplicate my sequence and I'm going to rename it as for confirming. Step 2. First, I'm going to simplify my sequence cause I want all my edit to be in one single track. So I'm going to select all my clips on the B-roll and I'm going to press Ctrl and drag them to my B1 track. Now everything is fine. Step 3. I'm going to send this sequence as a reference video for other departments such as color correction and audio production. So it's important to include time code burn in. I'm going to create a new track by pressing Ctrl Y. Now go to Avid FX. From generators, choose time code burn in. Click and drag this effort to our new layer and drop it on it. By default, it shows us a time code that corresponds to the sequence time code. But what we need is source time code and source clip name used in the V1 track. So select the effect and click on FX mode icon or press right square bracket on your keyboard. This will open the FX editor. This is where you edit your FX. In display 1, I'm going to change time code to source time code and change the current track to v1 because v1 track is where all my edit goes and i need information only from this particular track now i am going to adjust the size and position of the source time code as per my convenience now in display 2 i am going to change the time code to source clip name and the current track is set to v1 i am going to change the size and position of source clip and i generally prefer to go with the bottom right so everything is done now you can close the fx window and let's move on to step 4 now I'm going to add a slate and a 2 bit at the start and end of my sequence. This helps you to sync the audio and video that comes from the post while mastering the output. 
I am going to place a slate in the start of my sequence and the 2 beep 2 both start and end of my sequence. Before doing that, let's add some blank space both before and after the sequence. Go to the source monitor. In the top, you can find lip name menu. From that, choose load filler. Now the blank filler is loaded to our source viewer. Mark in and out for 10 seconds on the filler. First make sure all your layers are selected. Then now place your timeline cursor at the beginning of the timeline and press V on your keyboard. Now place the timeline cursor at the end of the track and press V. Now we have added a blank space both at the start and end of our timeline. Now let's add the 2 beep. A 2 beep is nothing but a visual cue which can be an image, a number or color bars. I'm going to use bars for my visual cue as it makes it very easy to set a visual beep because it has all the essential elements within it. So in order to add a visual beep, go to a bin, right click and choose import. Browse to your local C drive. Go to program folders. Open Avid folder. In that, open Avid Video Composer folder. In that, go to supporting files. In the supporting files folder, you can find a folder called test patterns. In this folder, you will find SMPTE bars. Select the SMPTE bars and click on import. Now we have imported SMPTE bar in a source viewer. Place your cursor anywhere on the source timer. Grab a single frame for our beep. Now I am going to place my cursor on 5th second of my timeline and press B. Now do the same at the end of my sequence. You can see I have created a visual cue right now. Now I want an audio cue that syncs to my visual cue. You can create this within Avid. Go to Tools, select Audio Tools. In the Audio Tools, click on Pick Hold menu. This will create a negative 20 like tone. Now you can see the tone media in the pane. Open the tone media in Source Monitor. Mark in and out for one frame. Place the timeline head on the Start of SMPT bars. Make sure your audio tracks are selected. Now press B. Here it goes. Now I will play this for you and you can see the two beats. See that's it. Do the same at the end of the sequence and the last thing I want to do is adding a slate. I am going to use title tool for this. You can find this in the tools menu. Now I am just going to type in the information that I want to display here. I just typing NLD to Tavern Resolve round trip. YouTube tutorial on confirming inside Tavern Resolve. I am going to place this at the start of my sequence in V1 track for 3 seconds. There you go. Now step 5. I am going to export this as a quick time movie. So select the sequence for confirming. Right click. Click on export. In export setting, choose either same as source or quick time movie. Click on options and make sure export as option is set to quick time movie. Make sure use marks, use selected tracks are checked and uncheck the inactive audio tracks. Color levels, keep them as legal range and aspect ratio as 16 is to 9 and click on save.
choose a file destination. I am naming this as confirming underscore qt. Now click on save. Now the sequence is exported to a QuickTime movie. Step 6. In this step, we are going to see how to export the sequence as an AAA file. First, I am going to duplicate this sequence and name it as AAF. I am going to make some changes to this sequence before exporting this into an AAF file. We are going to work on only the visuals inside Davin's Resolve. So, I am going to delete the audio tracks and also I am going to delete all the FX layer because Davin's Resolve don't understand many of avid effects. So, we have to manually recreate them inside Davin's Resolve using the reference video. Now, I have only one track where all my editing is done. Make sure that the track is selected. Now select your sequence, right click, choose export. Click on the options, set the export setting as AAF. Make sure use marks, use selected tracks and AAF edit protocol are all selected. Uncheck include audio tracks in the sequence. Let the export method be link to don't export media and click on save you can name it whatever you want i'm going to name this as confirming aaf now click on save and the aaf is exported and everything is fine so far in the next video i will show you how to recreate this sequence inside davin's result and how to relink the source files to this sequence using a AAF file. To watch that, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. If you have any doubts or opinion, please let us know in the comment box below. See you in the next video.